Hi guys, welcome to Boxing Deep Dive and the review of the IBF Cruiserweight World Title Fight between Jai Opataya and Maris Abridis. And uh, very happy, just like all our fellow Australians out there, to uh, to see that we have a new world champion on the scene. Uh, he goes by the name of Jai Opataya and uh, as I said, he's now the IBF Cruiserweight World Champion. And uh, I mean, the first thoughts are, what a fight. Uh, you know, both fighters showed a ton of heart, a ton of guts. Uh, you know, you had uh, Breedus with the nose, you had Jai, of course, with the with the jaw. Uh, as I said, both showed an unbelievable amount of heart to get through the fight. Uh, I think it will go down in history as one of Australia's greatest ever fights and performances by an Australian fighter because um, we did talk about in the lead up that the standing of Breedus, I think it was lost a little bit in the mix of the George Cambosis uh, event and, of course, the upcoming uh, Tim Zhu world title fight. Um, you know, and, of course, there was also other other things mixed in there as well. But the fact that uh, they brought over the best cruiserweight in the world for Jai to fight um, it just gives it all all the uh, the more merit. So uh, just an unbelievable performance. Uh, the show itself, let's start with the event. Uh, promoted by DNL Events in conjunction with Tasman Fighters up on the Gold Coast at the Convention Centre. Uh, really, really good event. Uh, stacked undercard. Uh, not all the fights on the undercard probably measured up to the expectations, but overall, uh, just a really good setting. I'm not quite sure what the crowd was like. It was hard to get a, a feel for it on the TV. Uh, on the ground, looked like obviously all the tables and and, uh, and everything was sold out, but the stands looked a bit patchy at some stage. I'm not quite sure. Uh, probably get a little bit more feedback from people that were actually there. But overall, um, all that aside, I'm sure they would have made some uh, some good good money out of the local uh, Gold Coast Council and, of course, the Queensland government. So, and knowing Dean Lonigan, uh, Dean now what they do, um, there's no doubt that it would have been a success because that's what they do. But uh, but onto the fight itself, um, just just uh, you know the the lead up to it was 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 a little bit funny. But, well, not funny, but. Um, Breeders, of course, didn't probably uh, bring a lot to the promotion as far as his personality and his uh, charisma. Of course, it always hurts when you can't speak English well. Uh, I think he did a, an okay job, though. Jai, on the other hand, is probably not the most outgoing type of guy. He's not um, flamboyant like a, a George Cambosis. Uh, he hasn't got the probably the pedigree of a, of a Tim Zhu and, of course, the name and everything like that. But... Those in the boxing world knew, or you know that, or know what a, a great talent the Jai Fatire is. Um, you know, he's the youngest Olympian uh, for Australia. Jeff Fennick picked him to be a world champion at 17 years of age. So that that you know obviously tells you something. And uh, those in the boxing world have, have seen Jai come up, knew that he was capable of it. But as I said, Breedus was uh, was a different beast, and uh, to beat him was going to take a monumental effort and a monument monumental effort. We got so uh, I thought it was great. Jai was really calm in the lead up to the fight. Uh, you see him in the change rooms, uh, very relaxed. Uh, you know, joking with his cornerman. You know, not really much uh, getting to him at all. I thought his team did a really, <coughs> excuse me, a really good job of keeping him nice and settled, keeping him nice and relaxed because it was an inexperienced team. Mark Wilson, mainly known as an amateur trainer, uh, obviously now involved with Justice Honey as well. Uh, now, of course, with Jai. So uh, the whole team, as I said, not the most experienced at those circumstances. Breeders' team, of course, has been there many, many times before. So I thought uh, Jai's team did a great job in uh, adapting to the uh, circumstances and the surroundings and uh, and just did a great job of, of, of uh, settling Jai down and, and themselves, of course, because in that situation, there can be some excitement, some emotions get the best of the people. Uh, and I thought everyone uh, was incredible. Of course, it helps when you've got a promoter like Dean Lonigan involved, who's been there many, many times before. Of course, he did the Jeff Horn, uh, Manny Pacquiao fight five years ago to the day, mind you, um, in in Brisbane. So, uh, but on to the fight. So round one, uh, I thought the fight started really well. Jai took the fight up to Breedus, which I thought he had to do. I thought if he let Breedus dictate the terms uh, early, that it could put Jai on the back foot and really unsettle him. But he got on the front foot straight away. Some really, really nice slick punches that he threw. Uh, and even round, uh, I liked Jai because he threw some really nice straight lefts to the body, head and body, by the way, but especially to the body. Uh, Breedus, uh, there was a, I think there was a clash of heads. Breedus returned to the corner with a cut eye. 
Uh, wasn't a bad cut, but it did hinder him for the rest of the fight. I gave Jai the close round, 10-9. Uh, I wouldn't have been surprised if it did go the other way, but I just thought his punches were a little bit crisper. He was a little bit busier. He took center ring, and I thought that was enough to give him the first round. The second and third rounds, I think you could throw up in the air. Uh, I gave Breedus the second round. I gave Jai the third round, but again, I think you could either split them or, or give them one to the other, uh, or give them both to one or the other. Um, very, very even rounds. Again, Breedus on the back foot. I, I think he was a little bit taken aback a little bit that Jai was willing to stand in the centre ring and take him on. I think he might have thought that Jai might have tried to box him a little bit early. Breedus has been known to be that big brute type of fighter who likes to dictate terms and, uh, and really bully his opponents around. So I thought the fact that Jai, uh, as I said, took centre ring, gave him some angles, some really slick punches. I think he was a little bit taken aback by how fast the Jai was, and Jai was just lightning quick early, uh, and super crisp with those punches, uh, he went to the body, he went to the head, he, he moved off to the side, he gave Breedus everything he could handle for those three rounds, and as I said, after three rounds, I had it two rounds to one for Breedus, but it depends on how you interpreted what both fighters were doing, but I had it two rounds to one for Jai, uh, round four is where the whole fight uh, changed, that's where Jai started landing some really good shots, uh, of course, he then he landed that beautiful right uppercut that just shattered Brutus's nose, um, and Brutus was in all sorts of trouble. Uh, I think the bell. I don't think the bell actually saved him, but it really uh, came at an opportune time for for Brutus because he was in all sorts. And and if you ever been a fighter, if you've been hit in the nose, especially when it's been busted. Uh, it's not a great feeling, and uh, he would have been really uh, in all sorts going back to the to the corner. I think the corner, um, surprisingly, I think panicked a little bit. Uh, you would think in that situation they'd be nice and calm. Uh, Brutus looked very unsettled as well. Um, you'd see he was swallowing a lot of swallowing a lot of blood. He had blood everywhere, and just that that pain that would have been shooting through his through his uh, face at that time would have been pretty unbearable. And with only 60 seconds to recover, it would have been tough. And when he went out there, so he obviously had the, the cut eye, he had now the nose. Um, the round, uh, round five begins. Uh, they didn't really do a great job of stemming the flow. He had blood absolutely everywhere. And and good thing about Jai, as, as good fighters do, um, Opatai, he sensed he had Breedus and he really poured it on. He backed him up for the entire round. Uh, Brutus really struggled to stay in the fight. And I really thought at that stage there was a real opportunity for Jai to actually get him out of there. But I, I think that Jai, you know, obviously gave Brutus his respect and uh, just took his time. You never know with a fighter like Brutus whether they're actually, um, you know, playing cat and mouse, whether they're trying to draw you in and uh, so that they can uh, counter. But I thought Jai did a really good job of staying balanced and focused and uh, just did what he had to do, but full of confidence. You could just see his confidence levels rise. I thought he won the, the sixth round very, very, uh, sorry, the fifth round very, very clearly. And Breeders at that stage, um, I think even then, after five rounds, knew that the fight was slipping away. Uh, round six was a more even round. Uh, Breeders was uh, still struggling to breathe. He had blood just streaming from his nose. Um, and, and Jai really got back on the jab, and he really started to carve Breeders up. Um, it kept him at range, uh, those, those long range shots, especially that jab, as I said, was really starting to take control. Um, and I, again, I gave Jai uh, the round. So uh, after six rounds, uh, sorry, after uh, seven, uh, sorry, six rounds, I had a five rounds to one for Opataya. Uh, into the seventh round, uh, again, uh, Breeders had his moments. He landed some, some big shots early. I think he sensed at the halfway mark that he was in trouble. I, as I said, I gave him, um, I gave five rounds to one to Opatire at that stage. Uh, he came out strong. He landed, I think he landed a really good uh, overhand right. He landed a really good uh, left hook uh, early. But Jai picked the pace up more as the uh, the round went on and more than matched him and actually finished really strongly. Um, and at that stage, Breedus, again, face full of blood. He had blood everywhere. And Jai, again, was just gaining more and more confidence. And I gave him the seventh round as well. Even though, as I said, Breedus started the round well, I think Jai came home and won the seventh round to be 6-1 up. And at that stage, it was his fight to lose. Round eight, uh, Breedus uh, had a really, really good round, I thought. Uh, he poured absolutely everything into it. I think after that seventh round, he knew that title was pretty much gone unless he really pulled something out of the fire. Uh, he worked really hard for the round, uh, really worked hard to get back into the fight. Uh, Jai, he went with him with everything that he had to offer. I think he matched what Breedus had, but I just think the work rate of, uh, of Breedus uh, and those couple of good shots that he landed gave him the round. So after uh, uh, seven rounds, sorry, eight rounds, 
Uh, I had it six rounds to two for a Pattaya. Uh, round nine, uh, Breedus, he landed a beautiful right hand late. Uh, but apart from that, um, Jai dominated the round, I thought. Straight left's landing at will. And Breedus looked absolutely exhausted by that stage. So, you know, you could probably make a case for Breedus winning the round with the, the really good overhand right. But apart from that, Jai dominated the round. And at the end of the day, it was one punch that Breedus landed as good as it was. Uh, Jai landed the more punches for the round. So I gave him the round as well for round nine. So at that stage, I have it seven rounds to two. And this is where Breedus really started to pick it up. Round 10, both fighters traded big punches. I was a little bit surprised that Jai... At this stage, I know, he must have known that he was he was well in front, uh, but he, he he chose to trade with Breeders, which I thought wasn't a great idea at that time, especially if the jaw they said it was maybe cracked or broken after round two. Surprised that he he was standing with Breeders and trading in that position, knowing he was he was in front, but also with the jaw. Um, Breeders back uh, dry up for the majority of the round. Uh, solid right uppercut. Uh, at the end, I think, gave it to Breedus. So at that stage, again, 10-9 uh, uh, for Breedus, and I had it 7 rounds to 3 for Jai. Uh, round 11, a very, very close round. Uh, both landed some really good punches. Jai looked a lot fresher um, with one round to go, of course, but then he had the, the jaw. He went back to the corner, and you could tell there was, there was something definitely seriously wrong. Um, you know, as I said, they, they, they thought something had happened in the second round. I think in the 11th round, it was the other side. And whatever problem he had was uh, was blown out by, by 10 because um, you could see his jaw immediately started to swell. And as far in front that he seemed to be, he just had the impression that, geez, he's going to have to hang on for dear life here because I've never had a broken jaw, but it looks very, very painful. And uh, he looked in all sorts of trouble. I did give the 11th round just to uh, Morris Breeder. So at that stage, I had it seven rounds to four. So again, Jai, my book, could not lose the fight. He just had to hang on and hang on that he did. Breeders gave it absolutely everything in that last round. He, uh, he struggled to hold on um, with, uh, with what looked like a broken jaw, of course. Uh, and Breeders, uh, absolutely exhausted, uh, but just gave it everything, uh, but just couldn't finish Jai off. Uh, just a really, really gutsy fight by by, uh, by both fighters, but gutsy round by both fighters too, by the way, but a gutsy fight. I gave Breeders uh, the round 10-9. Uh, uh, so in my book, I did actually have it seven rounds to five, which would have made it 115-113 uh, for, for Jai. Now, the official cards uh, I have here, it was 116-112 from uh, Judge John Basile. That was for, uh, for Jai. Um, 115, 113 for Jai and 116, 112 for Jai as well. So a unanimous decision win for Jai Opatia. So uh, look, just an unbelievable effort by Jai. Um, he he just pulled out all the stops to get the win. He fought well above, I think, his experience level. Uh, but I just think his his unbelievable skills just rose to the occasion. Look, he was obviously set for the fight. It reminded me a lot of uh, George Cambosis against Lopez and uh, Jeff Horn against Manny Pacquiao, where they were in against a very, very well-credentialed um, uh, world, you know, pound-for-pound pound pound fighters. Uh, Brett is maybe not in the class of a Lopez or Pacquiao, but still a great fighter and the best in the world. And I think, like uh, Cambosis and, and uh, Jeff Horn, that uh, Jai really fought out of his skin, rose to the occasion, and in front of his uh, crowd, got the job done. So uh, really, really proud of Jai. I thought he, um, you know, he's done Australia proud and he's uh, Samoan uh, heritage proud. And, uh, you know, to see him in the in the ring afterwards, he couldn't do the interview, of course, because he could barely speak. He did let out, let out the roar. Uh, credit also to Ben Damon, of course, who didn't push the issue. He said, Jai, get out there and enjoy your win. Went back to the change rooms. I thought it was pretty classy, too, that... Uh, Morris Breedus actually came into the change room uh, as well. Wasn't so uh, keen on him pretty much conducting a press conference in Jai uh, Abertai's dressing room or Jai sitting there with the ice on his on his jaw and in not real good shape. But it wasn't his fault. The reporters are in there and kept pressing him for questions. So I think no doubt we'll see a rematch. Um, I, think, um, I think it was close enough um, that, that there will be a rematch. Breeders, of course, being the champion, deserves the rematch. He's come all the way to Australia to put the title on the line, so I think that will happen. And then after that, who knows what Jai will do. I, I personally think he might have a couple of fights at Cruiserweight and then test the heavyweight division. He's definitely got the frame to go up, 
uh, just like Usyk did and many others before him have done before, uh, Holyfield and these types of guys, of course. So I think he's definitely got the frame to do it, and I think he will. Obviously, that's where the big bucks are. So uh, just like the rest of Australia, I'm super proud of, uh, of Jai Apatia. Uh, it's been a massive uh, 12 months for Australian boxing. Uh, there's more to come, of course, uh, with, with uh, Mo uh, Michael Zarathos thrown in the mix as well. We've had the two uh, female boxers win world titles as well. So a great time for Aussie boxing. And who knows, you throw the Maloney brothers in there as well. And uh, by the end of this year, maybe we might have another couple of world champions thrown in there as well. So, uh, so great for Australian boxing. Again, super proud of Jai, just like the rest of Australia. hope you guys enjoyed uh, the fight. hope you've enjoyed this review. And uh, we'll see you next time.